everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Handmaid's Tale, Season 3, Episode 12, Sacrifice. That's coming up next. opening scene takes off where Eleven left off. June is in her room. She's got the gun that Joseph gave her. She's emptying out the clip to see how many bullets she got. And she's popping it back into the gun. Looks like a load scene from The Godfather. She hears a truck pulling up. She thinks that they're coming for her. She hears the door open. She hears the footsteps coming up the stairs. She's pointing that gun at the door. She is ready to regulate and thinking, oh, here we go. It's time. And the door opens, and it's Mrs. Lawrence. And she says, well, you scared me. June, they need you in the kitchen to prepare the sandwiches. And June gives her that look like, make yourself known next time. Don't come barging in here like that. You know what's going on? Hey, y'all. June goes down to the kitchen. She speaks with the other Marthas, and they say, hey, you know, you're a hero. You know, you've done a great job in reference to the incident what happened with Commander Wilson. And she's like, hey, you know, thanks a lot. You've helped. You know, great job. And June has that look on her face like, Dang, you know, the word done got out. Okay. So she prepares this tray and she takes it into the main room and she notices that there are guards that are in each room and they have e each earpieces and they're looking at June and they're saying, blessed day and how you doing? And she's looking around like, oh, let me tread lightly. So she drops off the tea or the coffee and she starts to go to each commander and, you know, giving them tea or asking them, do they want any? Some are putting up their hand like, I'm good. And some are just like, go ahead and pour. And what they're discussing is, they're discussing to Joseph, hey, look, it's a situation, you know, uh, Fred and Serena, they've been taken into custody. What's our next move? And Joseph says, well, dang, you know, y'all haven't been in communication with me for a while. And now that this is happening, now you come in here and ask him for my advice. And I thought that was interesting. He kind of had that comment like, oh, now you need me, you know? And they're like, we need you. It's desperate times. We need you to, what do we need to do? Do we need to close the border? What's going on? We need to, you taking this lightly. Like we need to show and what Gilead is all about. Let's represent. And Joseph's like, pump your brakes. We need to reevaluate what's going on. Blessed day. Y'all have a good day. They get up and they leave. So Joseph says, hey, there's a lot that's going on. And I don't know if you heard, but Serena and Fred, they have been taken into custody, captured. Uh, we're really trying to figure out what's going on. But the word around is that they've been captured by Americans and they're being questioned. And, you know, that's what's going on. And June has this reaction like, oh, it's like she's dumbfounded. And he says, look, June, smile. <laughs> You just got away with murder, and Serena and Fred, they're in custody. So smile. And he goes into the next room, and June sits down, and she gives this evil laugh. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, all right. Calm down. You got some good news. Pump your brakes. It then cuts to June. She's going to the market and she's seeing all the different handmaids. They're getting their normal, you know, things and items out of their meat and, and carrots and what other stuff. And she speaks with Alma and she's like, hey, we're a go. You know, uh, Billy's in and we should be able to take off in about a week. Make sure that you trust your Marthas. Get the word out that the code is to bring the kids to the Lawrence's after nightfall, and that's how we're going to get them out. And she says, really? That's, like, giving her, you know, that nudge, like, is that it? Is that simple? And George is telling her, yeah, it's a green light. We're ready to go. Ugh. Kind of disappointed in Alma's uh, response. I hope I'm saying, I'm, I hope that's her name. But she, her response wasn't too happy. It was kind of like a hater response. Like, wow, you haven't even been in the game that long and you already getting planes and stuff. Red flag, watch out for that. I think that's going to come back to hit her in the booty. I don't know. So, anywho, she tells her that and she moves on and she sees, and she sees Rita. So, Rita's just like, hey. Gives her the nudge, come over here, talk to me. Come on, come on, come on. 
Serena says, hey, June, I don't know if you heard, but um, Serena and Fred, they've been taken into custody. And June was like, yeah, girl, I heard, like, what it do? And she said, look, um, I had some people come to me, and they were asking me questions. And June like, what you say? She said, I didn't say anything. The last time I spoke to Serena, she was leaving from the airport, and she, you know, gave me Godspeed and gave me a hug, and she was always nice to me. And June says, good, good. And Rita and June, they share a little finger handshake because they don't want to show too much. Kind of letting each other know, great, this is good what's happening. This was your idea. I'm happy for you. And we cut to the next scene. So then we see Fred and Serena. They are kind of like in a holding dang near studio apartment. And I'm like, dang, can I be in custody wherever this is? I mean, y'all got the little nice. Anyway, so they're in there and Serena hugs him. It's just like, I can't believe this happened. And Fred's like, it's okay. They're not going to get away with this. So she's like, just tell them what they need to know. And it's okay. And I just did this for Nicole. And he just like, Hold up. And he started putting two and two together. Like, wait a minute. You ratted us out. He give her that look like, no, you didn't. And he started to choke her. Like, you know, like, no, you didn't. And he said, you did this? What have you done? And she's like, I, I, I did this. I, I. And he's just like, look. He giving her that look like, whoo. Woo, if we get out of this, when we get back to Gilead, I'm getting your arms and your legs chopped off. You are on the wall. Like, I can't believe you. And she just steps back like, I did this for us. <laughs> then we have, oh, this scene right here. Then we have Mrs. Wilson, and she's at Joseph's house. And she's talking about, hey, you know, my husband, he's missing. And keep in mind, June gave him the business in the last episode. She the one, and she's the reason why he's missing, why he's dead, okay? She don't know he's dead. But we have Joseph, and we have Mrs. Lawrence, and they're sitting together, and we have Mrs. Wilson, and they're in the living room, and June is in the room as well. And she's expressing, my husband is missing. I need you to tell me what the next steps are, and I'm just worried, and I'm afraid that he won't come back. And all of a sudden, Mrs. Lawrence says, well, we can take, we can take you with us. And Joseph has that look like, ooh. In June, you could tell her ass cheeks were tight because she was just like, oh, no. Oh, my God. Don't say nothing. And she says, oh, they can come with us. And Joseph's like, oh, yeah, they can come to our house. Uh, yeah, we have uh, plenty of room. And, you know, Mrs. Wilson is like, yeah, because I have six kids and I'm afraid I can't take care of all these six kids by myself. And they may take, you know, the children, you know. And Mrs. Lawrence is like, yes, they can come with us, right? We have enough room. And Joseph is like, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, mi casa es su casa. Yeah, 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 they can come over here. <laughs> yeah. And so Mrs. Wilson says, well, okay, thank you. And woo, I thought to myself, I thought to myself, this is not good. She is slowly cracking and they got to do something about this. Then cut to the next scene, we have Luke and Moria. I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but Moria, they are going through, you know, the security bell and the belt and they're putting stuff on the belt and they, look, they already look frustrated and they're like, well, why are they checking us for weapons? Like, we're gonna attack them and we don't know exactly where they're going. And they're like, look, hold the baby. So they got Nicole, hold the baby while the stroller goes through the customs and why it goes through the security bell while we check everything and they're huffing and puffing like this is ridiculous and we don't know where they're going so then we see they're going through a security because they are going to the holding area where serena is and i'm like really and we see the holding cell that serena is in once again looks like she's in a good studio apartment she's taking off her gilead clothes and she's in a nice blouse and she has her hair down and a little makeup and she looks so excited and you're like oh okay they've arranged something so serena can see nicole oh whoop de doop -de doop so you get Moria, pardon me if I'm saying her name right, or Maria, she comes in there with the baby and she already has this look like, you. And she says, hey, I'll be back. She's talking to the baby. I'll be back in an hour. I'll come to see you. <sighs> Here you go. 
and she starts to hand Serena the baby. And she says, oh, I'm just so happy to see you. And she says, look, she says to, to Serena, you may have different clothes on, and you might not be physically in Gilead, but you are still the same evil person. And, you know, the guards from Canada and all of that and the social services, and they're like, hey, well, you can't say that here. This, we letting allow her to see the baby. She's like, oh, you know, F you. <laughs> like, I got to get this off of my chest. She said, you are the one that held down my friend June as your husband proceeded to rape her. You still the same person. As a matter of fact, you're the gender traitor. And I thought, oh, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Preach that. And Serena had that look in her face like still in denial of what she's doing what, or what she did. And she has tears in her eyes. And she finally holds the baby. And she leaves out of the room, Moria. She leaves out of the room. And, you know, Serena's holding the baby. And she's like, oh, it's okay. The baby starts to cry. And the social services lady, you know, child protective services or whoever she is, she says, oh, you know, the baby just thinks you're a stranger and it's going to take her a while to get used to you. And she's like, oh, it's okay, baby. Your mother is here. And the lady said, well, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, don't say that. Um, you are a visitor and you're going to confuse the child. Don't do that. And Nicole, she kind of had, I mean, in Serena, she had that look like, okay, okay. <laughs> she said, oh, no, no, don't tell her you're her mother. Don't do that. Uh-uh. Then we have Joseph. He's on the phone. And he's still speaking with other commanders, right? And June, she walks in and she's listening to his conversation. And he's like, look, it's easy as for us to get into a ward and to get out of one. So no, we got to think about this. Look, if we close the border, think about it. We are losing out on trade and we could be strangled to death, meaning the resources, food, whatever they need, if they close that border. He's like, let's just think about this. You guys are just trigger happy and you guys are ready to just pop off. No, I don't agree with that. Just chill out. And he gets off the phone. And June said, well, what's going on? And he says, look, they, they want to pop off. They want to start World War III, but they are not thinking and we might have to move up this departure and what we're planning and June's just like uh, move it up like what the hell so then they hear the front door opening and it's Mrs. Lawrence trying to get out the house and they're like whoa whoa, whoa where are you going and she's just like oh I know this one girl down the street she may want to leave and I'm gonna tell her she can leave with us oh and it's another girl blonde haired girl and I, and I think she'll be able to go with us and they close that door and June says uh Mrs. Lawrence don't do that, okay? We have a plan to get out of here, and you need to stop. You need to stop. And she starts shaking her like, you are going to mess up this whole plan, lady. Calm down. And Joseph is like, whoa, you know, stop. Don't stop shaking my wife like that. And immediately when that happened, I'm thinking, woo, Mrs. Lawrence is getting loose-lipped. And I immediately thought of that movie with Tom Cruise, with the War of the Worlds or whatever, when, you know, the aliens, they go about sound. And when they were in this, this, side note, when they were in this house trying to be quiet, it was this one guy that kept talking and being loud and all of that. So Tom Cruise had to kill him because he was trying to live for him and his daughter. So he had to, and I'm, he had to kill her. So I'm thinking, ooh, that's probably what they're going to have to do to Mrs. Lawrence. And I'm like, ooh, here we go. I got a feeling they setting it up for that. Then we cut to Fred's holding cell. Once again, it, it, it don't even look like a holding cell. It looked like a nice, modern uh, studio apartment. He had the little view of like a little pond or a tree outside and had a nice uh, uh, couch and little bed and a mirror. And I'm like, dang, this is not custody. So, you know, the Canadian guy, he comes in there and he's like, look, we got this opportunity. The world wants to hear from you. We want to know why and what was your point in Gilead and they want to talk to you and he's just like well no you know and the dude from Canada was like okay suit yourself but in the meantime uh Luke yeah you know Luke the one who was married to June he wants to talk to you and Fred was like oh right now oh uh, uh dang um is he outside and he's like yeah he's outside he want to talk to you and then all of a sudden you know he musters up some courage and he's like okay let him in let him in. So Luke comes in. And he has like a little booklet. And we don't know what's in the book. But he comes in and he sits down. And the guy was like, well, we'll leave Luke and you alone. And don't worry, the guard is over here, you know, just in case. So the guard is here just in case. So they leave. It's Luke, the guard, and Fred. And they're in this room. And Luke says, look, um, 
<laughs> I did a little bit of research and he has this book with all the stuff that Fred has done and certain things about Gilead. He was just like, I don't understand. We kind of grew up the same. After reading these files, we kind of grew up the same. First class education, we were God fearing. Like, what are you, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden, you see Fred say, he, he turns his personality into something else. And he says, well, while this world and while the fertilization rate and women having babies was going down and pollution and all that, what were you doing? I was trying to think of a, pl a plan to save, you know, humanity. And he says, you know what? Your wife, June, she might come back. You might see her in the future. And Luke says, I will see her again. You know, that he said that like definitely. He felt it in his heart. It's like, I'll see her again. And Fred says, ha, you'll see your wife, but, you know, she's not the same. At the Gilead, she's not the same. I made her different. And as, as you're hearing this, you're like, woo, Fred is in his head and messing with him. And you just see Luke just bubbling and just anger. And you're like, oh, what is he about to do? And Luke gets up and clocks him a good one in the face. And that guard is starting to pull him away. And what I thought was funny, <laughs> Luke was like, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. Code for when I see you next time on site, I'm going to mess you up. I'm going I'm to mess you up, letting them know next time. This, ooh, you better be glad that guard was here. Well, this next scene is the pivotal, pivotal turning point. June, she starts to go upstairs, and she's giving Mrs. Lawrence either her dinner or a snack or something. And she's taking the tray up to the room, and she knocks on the door, and she says, you know, Mrs. Lawrence, you know, waiting on okay to come in her room to bring her something. And she knocks on the door again, Mrs. Lawrence. She doesn't hear anything. So she comes into the room and she's like, you sleep? Hello? And she shakes her a little bit. She's kind of breathing really lightly and, and harshly like, you know, and she looks at her, kind of looks at her face. It's like, man, what's going on with her? She's shaking her and she won't wake up. And she looks at her side table and sees that she's taking a whole bunch of pills. And she's like, oh my God. And she goes to get help and she's rushing towards the door and she stops. And I thought, oh, June, I already knew it. I already called it War of the, War of the Worlds when that moment I thought, ooh, that's the title, Sacrifice. That's what we get to. I said, June, you about to do this for real? And she stops, and she kindly just, just kind of strolls into the room. And she goes back to Mrs. Lawrence's bed, and she's looking her struggle to breathe. Just, and she looks at her like, yes, breathe, helpful, breathe. Try, try <laughs> to stay alive. And she sits on that bed in pure satisfaction and she kisses Mrs. Mrs. Lawrence on the cheek or on the forehead. And she gets up and she walks around a little bit. She goes back to that front door. She picks up that tray. She goes back to the door, closes the door, and sits that tray down in front of the door to make it look like she never even went into the room. To make it look like she just left her that tray. I said, what? I said, ooh, <laughs> June, what? Girl, June is, is. <laughs> I started out really hating June this season, but girl, you getting some cool points, child. You getting some cool points. So she walks back to her room, like, slow motion, like, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> I said, woo, she go back to her room, she lay down. And she was up all night because due to the cinematography, she goes back to her room and it's pitch black and her eyes are open. Then it goes to show that the sun is rising and now she has the sunrise all of her face, that light. So they let us know that she was up all night until the break of dawn, until the morning. And then the next thing you hear is another Martha or a handmaid say, oh my God, Mrs. Lawrence. And June, she closes her eyes like, they found her. Mission accomplished. Oh, June. But cuts back to Serena in confinement, and she's still in her modern clothes, and she's sitting in her room. And the Canadian, he says, look, I brought you a few things. Here's a magazine about this, and here's a newspaper about this. And the scene was very short, but what it wanted to show the audience is that 
wow, Serena hasn't been able to read. And the last time she was able to read was what, a couple of seasons ago or last, last season or whatever. And she hasn't been able to just take her time and read something that didn't have to do with Gilead. And she says, oh, thank you. And I thought, okay, I get this scene, but whatever. <laughs> Cause you know, I, I don't like Serena. So the final scene of the episode, that day or, or next day, we show at Joseph's house that the Marthas and the handmaids, they're preparing food and you can kind of hear the conversation of like, oh, we're going to the service. We're getting ready to prepare to go to the service. And they clear out and they're getting the food ready and all this other stuff. And so Joseph, he walks in, he's teary eyed and June is, is an apocalypse? Is it Gilead? What's that sound? Like a siren. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. I'm not even gonna edit that. So Joseph says, I could have went in her room. And I should have checked and I didn't check. And then June says, no, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't blame yourself. I, I could have went in that room and checked too. And I say, you better act. And she does those fake tears for Joseph. Like, I'm so sad that she's gone. And she put on those tears. And he's like, you're right. You're right. And she's like, yeah. And she walk, watches him walk out the kitchen. And she clears those tears up quick. She's like, <sniffs> and she got over there real fast. I was like, whoa, June trying to get out of Gilead. Okay. So they cut to the next scene. They're at Miss Lawrence's funeral and everybody's saying their prayers and they're dressed in black and all this other stuff. And then they say amen and everybody starts to slowly lead, leave. And we have Joseph. He's at the casket and June, she's a couple of feet behind him. And then we have Aunt Lydia. Lydia. She walks up to June and she's like, well, hello. And then June says, will you give me a minute? A kind way and saying, Aunt Lydia, I don't want to talk to you right now. I just don't. Like, that That was a very formal way of saying, girl, get out of my face. Like, I, 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 I'm I, just, look, bye. So Lydia says, oh, of course, I'll give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. So then we have June. She walks up to Joseph and she says, do you prefer to be alone? And he doesn't really say anything, you know. And she's just standing there like, And, oh my God, Joseph turns to her and gives her a look of red rum, murder, and he looks at her, he gives her this look, I'm going to try to do it. He turns and he says, and I thought, oh, oh, June, that is a look like Joseph, oh, he's suspicious of you, keep it, keep in mind. Joseph is being nice to June, but he's not stupid. He is calculating and getting stuff in his mind. And he's probably thinking, oh, did June, did you do this? I felt like Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost. Oh, June, your life's in danger, girl. Like, oh my God, that was the ending scene. And he had this look. Like, oh, I've got my eye on you. And he starts to calculate like, dang, everybody that comes in your presence is dying, coming up missing. He's on to her. He's on to her tracks. Woo! It's only, what, a couple more episodes, y'all, before the season ends? This is what I think so far, y'all. I think that June, she forgetting where she is. She is forgetting what she, where she is. I think that either Joseph or somebody that we least expect is going to snitch on June. And it's highly likely somebody June knows and that she likes. I guarantee, or what I think, it won't be someone that's a follower of Gilead. It will be a hateration, holleration handmaid mad that she's putting this stuff together and it's so possible that they can get all of these kids and these people out of Gilead. I have that feeling. Oh my goodness. What do you think? Oh my God, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Ooh, 
this episode, y'all.